Today we're going to be talking about the continuity of trig functions. In other words, where does the graph break? I don't know if you know this or not, but four of the trig functions have asymptotes, and that's because they have de denominators that you can't see inside the function. One of these is secant. Let's recall some of these trig identities. Remember that tangent can be written as sine over cosine. Therefore, it has a denominator of cosine. Also remember that cotangent can be written as cosine over sine. Therefore, it has a denominator of sine. Secant can be written as 1 over sine. I mean, cosecant can be written as 1 over sine. Therefore, it has a denominator of sine, just like cotangent. And secant can be written as 1 over cosine. Therefore, it has a denominator of cosine, just like tangent. So that means that when we have one of those four trig functions, we're going to have discontinuity because they're going to have asymptotes caused by those uh, denominators that we really can't see unless we rewrite them in terms of those fractions. So like secant for this example, we know it's going to have discontinuity because it can be written as 1 over cosine. To figure out where it's discontinuous and where it's continuous, we're going to change that secant into a fraction. So the first step is to actually do that. Now for sine and cosine, you know, uh, I can write a page here real quick just for future reference. And I've talked about this before, but cosine and sine, you know, we've probably looked at these graphs before, but they're just waves like this, okay? So be, both of these are continuous everywhere from negative infinity to infinity. Unless, of course, you change, you know, you could put a fraction inside of those, but basically... As long as you don't add a fraction or some uh, some or some other kind of restraint, like a square root function, they're going to be continuous everywhere. Okay, so for those, it's simple. But for the other ones, they can be written as fractions. So cos uh, secant can be written as 1 over cosine. So it says it's secant of x minus pi. I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over cosine of x minus pi. Okay, and then I'm going to take whatever that denominator is, and set it equal to zero, and that will tell me where it's discontinuous. In other words, that will tell me where there's an asymptote. Now notice these other things, this one half and this plus four, they don't mean anything. They're not going to influence the continuity of the function. Only the bottom of that denominator is going to affect it. So I'm only setting the bottom of the denominator equal to zero to figure out where it's discontinuous. Just like we did with rational functions, because it basically is a type of rational, rational function. Now the next thing we're going to do is take the inverse cosine of both sides, or as some people call it, the arc cosine. It's the same thing. That cancels the cosine on both sides, and we're left with just x minus pi. What is arc cosine of 0? It's wherever cosine equals 0 in the unit circle, which is where x equals 0. And if you recall, recall um, it's on the y-axis of the unit circle. So that would be at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, um, 5 pi over 2. Basically any, uh, whoops, meant to put 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, any odd number pi over 2, which we can write as 2n minus pi over 2, because 2n minus 1 is an odd number. We can solve by adding pi to both sides. And then we can find a common denominator by adding 2 pi over 2, so we can have 2's down here, the same. And then combine the tops and simplify. And we get basically the same thing. You think about it, if you're adding pi to that original um, y-axis, you know, you're still just going like this and like this. So it doesn't really change. So the final answer for this one is it's going to be discontinuous or basically uh, the same. Basically, any, any point on the y-axis is not going to work because x is going to be 0, and therefore secant uh, is going to be discontinuous. It's going to have an asymptote. But... Other than that, it would be continuous everywhere else, so we can say it's continuous when x is not equal to those values. Okay, let's take a look at what a trig function will look like and what these asymptotes like might look like. All right, so here we have a trig graph, and this is actually just a tangent. Okay, now we can randomize this and make it something else and change the constraints. But uh, not just true for tangent, but in any graph, uh, secant cosecant or cotangent that can be written as a fraction is going to have these asymptotes. In other words, these places where the graph doesn't exist, that's discontinuity. In fact, it's called infinite discontinuity because, you know, it goes up and down on the left and right forever. 
And so that's why we set the denominator not equal to zero. We're finding out where those asymptotes are located.